All right, so I've gotten a lot of responses about my inspiring and epic struggle of survival uh, that happened to me two days ago here in Maine when I got lost in the mountains for about 19 hours. Frigid conditions, I don't know, minus 15 degrees, 60 mile an hour winds. Anyways, uh, people asked if I could share my experience with them, so I wanted to give a more in-depth uh, documentary, if you will, a real quick one about what I went through, and I got a bunch of behind-the-scenes footage that didn't make the, the first cut. So I hope you guys enjoy, and I hope you guys learn something from this. All right, one of the first things you got to do in a survival situation is assess what you have, all right? Take a deep breath, sit down, gather your thoughts, Take out everything you have on you, lay it in front of you so you can see it all, you can properly evaluate your options. Alright, got a flashlight, alright, a pen, got some weed, on my other pocket I got, I got a timer, vodka, got the flash. What else? What else? What else? Got a beer. Got a chainsaw. All right. Are you kidding me? Give me something I can freaking use. All right, I got the weed. That's all right. We got weed, vodka. That's good. That is lighter. I don't like the weed. That's it, man. What the f all right, so, you know, we're totally screwed. You're not often going to find everything you need on you, that's for sure. As a matter of fact, you're not going to have hardly anything that you can use ever. Every now and then you get lucky. But determine what you have and what you don't have and start rolling with the dice, all right? Next situation you need to do is find out what is around you. You know, that's a big deal right there. Uh, so what I do is I, I take the... Biggest, tallest tree that I can find, and I go up it as quickly as I can, and I survey. I see where I try to see where there's a road. I try to see something, and I get down as quickly as I possibly can. Oh, well. All right, I think we got something here. All right. Wow. Okay. Now, this is interesting. Um, now, you know what this tells me. This tells me there's been a train here recently, real fresh because I, I still see the tracks. So, so, um, the, you know, when it comes to getting back to civilization, this really doesn't do very much to help us. It's not going to, not like it's going to lead anywhere. Um, so we're going to probably make better time by just go ahead and, and going through the untamed wilderness of northern Maine, bush country and stuff, uh, the mountainous territory. We'll probably make better time doing that. And right now, time is of the essence. So that's what I'm going to do here. Now, obviously, water. That's nothing more important than getting a clean source of drinking water. And there's a couple of different ways you can go about doing that. Obviously, the easiest way is if you have something metal and a lighter, you go ahead and you boil your water. Um, if that's not possible, um, you want to try to find maybe a source of standing water. You don't really want to go to like moving water, uh, like a waterfall or something like that. Typically has the worst of the carcinogens and cancer causing agents. So you really want to avoid something like that. Uh, you'd probably better get in it in more of a swampy area. Um, but I'll show you a good place right here. Now, even this water looks a little too clean for drinking, um, but we're going to impress our luck anyways. And, I, and I, I will tell you, I am rolling the dice on this because, you know, all it takes when you're already dehydrated and you don't have enough water is to drink some bad water and you get Giardia or something like that, and, and then you're really screwed. <sighs> mm. ah, nothing tastes better than fresh mountain water. Your next big one, and probably 
just as important, if not the most important, uh, shelter. We gotta find somewhere to stay. You gotta get out of the elements, somewhere you can trap your own body heat and somewhere good ventilation where you can put yourself, uh, make yourself a nice little fire near an entrance or something like that, something where nothing else can kind of get up from behind you, you know? Uh, just investigate it very well, make sure it's a safe place to go, and that's where you start. Now, I think we found maybe a temporary shelter. Uh, this would be something that would get us through a bad snowstorm. I could set up a little fire right outside of here. Let me just make sure we're good. You're smiling at me. You got lots of teeth. You're smiling. You're a big boy. It looks pretty friendly. Um. Now, I knew if I had any chance of making it, I had to find my left eye. Understand this one critical fact 70% of plants in the wild are going to be toxic if you're a human. All right, so you got to be on your P's and Q's with what you're eating. Don't don't take any chances. All right, you can go a lot longer without food than you can water. I'm so hungry. Oh my god, it's been days. Is that snow I just saw. Fuck. <laughs> Some more orange stuff. Gotta be something. Ooh. Right now, that's our first good sign. That's the first edible thing I think I've seen. It looks pretty edible. It's a mushroom, typically high in fiber. You know, uh, definitely some calories in there. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for right there. This is what's gonna get us through. Um, yeah, absolutely. Now, you do have to worry there's a few um, hallucinogenic species. I'm 99.9. .9, I'm, I'm positive. This is not it. It doesn't have the purple skirt. Uh, it's good. We're good. We're going to be good to go here. All right. Let's check that out. Mm. Mm. Earthy. Very earthy. <laughs> Has a, a tingling texture. <laughs> Now, as for the mushroom, I did misjudge that one. I, I had it confused with another one in my mind, and uh, it actually was a hallucinogenic mushroom. And uh, I'm actually well trained uh, at this point, for situations like I that, so tripping I have a high tolerance. So the effects on me were very minimal, uh, if it had any effect at all. Now, for somebody else, it would have caused a lot of issues. But like I said, for me, it wasn't a big deal, but you just something you want to think about.
So at this point, I start to come down pretty good. It's about time. Another thing you got to take into account, is especially if you're in a different ecosystem, oh shoot, things like that, you're going to see things you've never seen before. So, to a certain degree, be open to seeing the unexpected, to seeing things that you didn't expect and things you don't understand. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do more. My sister. What the fuck is wrong with you, woman? Mom, I miss you. I should have seen you more. Susan, don't ever drive a car. Ever. <laughs> Ravonda. It's probably good that I'm gonna die because I was gonna murder Courtney at some point. But I love you and. <laughs> Chloe! My only kid that I know about, I think. I love you and I'm gonna miss you so much. But you're fucking obnoxious. <laughs>